the causes of depression can be many and varied. Broadly speaking, they fit into two main categories, biological causes and psychological causes, or if you're a computer geek like me, hardware issues and software issues. At some point in your journey, it's going to be really important to try to figure out which of these factors or which combination of these factors are the big drivers in your depression. It's actually something that's quite hard to do and it's something that I got really wrong when I started out. It took me a long time to figure out the correct answer and that's something that really held me back. I'll come back and talk about my own experience in just a moment. This whole area can also be something that can be quite controversial. For example, you may know of a friend or a loved one who's taken antidepressant medication for many years, but who you're convinced in your heart would do better with talking therapy or counselling or a more psychological based intervention. So in this video I'm going to do my best to try to untangle both of these sides and talk about how we have strategies around these different areas. And what's really interesting is that people make some very common mistakes. Um, particularly if they're convinced for very good reasons that their depression is primarily biological or primarily psychological. I see the same pitfalls that people fall into again and again. So I'm going to talk about some of those uh, in just a moment as well. So what are these causes? Well, biological causes is really anything that has a physical impact that ultimately ends up in causing some sort of problem in the brain. Now, whether that is a connectivity problem, whether that is a chemical imbalance, there's a lot of re research that goes into that. Uh, and these problems can generally be seen on things like SPECT imaging scans and on QEEG scans, you get some sort of picture as to what happens when the brain gets broken. And there's a number of things here that we know can contribute to or can cause depression. For example, genetics, certain types of depression we know can have a very strong uh, genetic component. Uh, certain types of disease, uh, brain injury is another one. Some people have personality changes after they have some sort of brain injury because it damages part of the brain. Uh, diet and microbiome are two areas that we're becoming increasingly aware of at the moment, and I've got several videos talking about all of those. Uh, and also the obvious uh, around drug and substance abuse. Now these are not by any means exhaustive, there are other biological causes that will cause this sort of problem with these damage in the brain uh, that leads to depression. Uh, on, on the psychological side, there are all kinds of things. The modern world is filled with challenges that make it hard for us to lead really stable, positive, emotional lives all of the time. And these can be things like lack of purpose, uh, relationship problems, uh, anti-social media, as I quite often uh, see it or like to call it, uh, a lot of things around body image stereotypes that's maybe linked to, to social media, bereavement or other external events that can come and can have that kind of impact. Um, these are all things that we um, that, that, that can happen or uh, can happen externally to us and what happens then is that they then get fed in through the thinking patterns that we developed and these are thinking patterns that we may have built up as a child, these are thinking patterns that we may have learned throughout our life, but when you combine an external stimuli with a thinking pattern then you can end up with releasing stress hormones or doing other things that build up to cause problems in the brain. Now the interesting thing is that you end up with very much the same result at the end of the day. You end up with a brain that isn't working, that a brain uh, that has maybe got some sort of chemical or connectivity imbalance, a brain that will show on some of these different scan types as having you know, some kind of issue because you've actually overloaded it. And what's also really important to realize is that it's not specifically the external events on the psychological side that are causing this by itself. It's external events in combination with the way that we think about those events. And so a lot of the psychological interventions that I'm going to come on to talk about are things like cognitive therapy or meditation. And they both work here. They both work on, on these thinking patterns and they allow us to start to see the way that we're thinking and responding to events. And that allows us to improve. Now one of the questions uh, that often comes up is, how likely is it that the depression I'm having is biologically caused or how likely is it that it's psychologically caused? And that's quite a hard thing to tease out, but there are a few things that we can uh, kind of guess at here. Um, the first thing is that there, there are seven subtypes. I'm, I'm, I'm relatively convinced on, on this. I'll come and, and talk about the, uh, the, the, the work that's been done around this um, of depression and anxiety. <coughs> and 
One of them, uh, bipolar disorder, uh, there's really good evidence that it is uh, genetically caused. For the other six subtypes, it really is fair game. I really think it can be any one of these things or any one of those things or any combination of those that will ultimately lead uh, to one of those uh, issues in the brain. And so it can be a bit of a process of trying to tease these things apart. We know that somewhere between 50 and 75% of the depression responds really well to cognitive behavioral therapy, which is one of the sort of the gold standard of psychological depression treatment. And so that suggests quite strongly to me that the majority of depression has at least a reasonable psychological component in it. But at the same time, we also know that 50 to 75% responds well to antidepressant or medication or the more hardware-based approach uh, to dealing with uh, depression. And that may be because we have some fundamental problem in the brain, like maybe something that's called genetically or a brain injury, and so we're improving that problem. But it may also be that we're just raising the threshold here of what the brain is able to tolerate. So we're actually, by, by giving us a medication, we're improving the brain's ability to deal with the various psychological causes and thoughts that are coming in and that are maybe flooding the brain with cortisol and with other hormones that are, are causing damage. So it's pretty hard to, to untangle those two things. The other statistic that's really interesting is that 95% of depression responds to a combination of the two. So almost everybody will respond if you put a combination of those two things together. And for me, it wasn't just a combination of, of a uh, treatment on either side. I, was, I needed actually multiple interventions in each category uh, in order to get to the point where I was really, truly really well. When I was a teenager, I was treated with antidepressant medication. And in my early 20s, I had a fairly major relapse and started to become really depressed again. And that was a really scary event for me because it meant that the problem hadn't gone away and it meant that I was potentially facing a future where I was going to have to deal with that. And one of the ways in which I reacted to that was to think about whether or not my depression was likely to be caused by a psychological cause or by a biological cause. Um, and so because I had seen in my family and, and friends history people who had had uh, depressive problems for many years and who had been treated with medication and who hadn't necessarily achieved the level of quality of life that I was very much hoping to uh, achieve for myself, I was really afraid of the idea that I might have a biological cause that sat behind my depression. And so I started looking very carefully at all of the psychological causes. And I started doing cognitive therapy and I started doing meditation and really working on my thoughts and working on understanding all of that. And there was a fair bit of evidence that supported doing that work. And the evidence was that a lot of my thinking patterns were the kind of classic thinking traps that we learn about when we start to do cognitive therapy. And that I became significantly happier and more adapted to life and to my circumstances as I did those exercises. In fact, it's safe to say that I wouldn't be the person that I am now without having gone through all of that. It was a life-changing experience and it was incredibly useful. But what also happened was that over a period of time, as I started to really diligently work on all of these issues and be really honest with myself and figure out my thinking issues and go through all of that whole process, the events, the depressive episodes, got a bit less, but they also started to appear much less associated with events and an awful lot more random. So I started to have random depressive events rather than events that came because of a particular thought or a particular social interaction or a particular event. Uh, and and it, it became clear that there wasn't necessarily the same pattern to those. They could happen when everything was really good, when I was relaxed on holiday or at certain times of day. And so it became clear over a period of a number of years that actually it wasn't just the psychological side of things and that I had to be willing and open to looking at the biological cause. And if I'd done that earlier, I would probably have got better faster uh, because actually there are so many things that can be done on the biological side to intervene. And that some of those fears that I had were really unwarranted because of all of the things I was then able to do and discover and, and work on. Uh, so it's important, I think, to have an open mind and to be willing to look at both sides of this equation to establish all of the root causes that are there and that are affecting you and causing you to be depressed. So as my own story illustrates, it's very important to try to keep an open mind when you're trying to tease apart these factors in your own depression. For example, there may be some sort of life event happening in your life. 
which then hits untrained thinking patterns that we all have, releasing stress hormones, which causes slight damage, temporary damage to your brain operation, and that leads to depression. Or you may have poor brain chemistry, which is the result of genetics, or it might be the result of microbiome, or one of the other more kind of hardware biological based issues. And that leads fairly quickly to depression. Uh, and then the issue here, and the caveat, and the thing you've got to really watch out for is that if this happens, and you've got really good reason to think that you've got this biological driver for your depression, it will invariably cause your thinking patterns to be distorted. And the longer that you have depression, the more that's going to be a factor, and the more you're going to learn or unlearn really good thinking patterns. So I'll come back to that in a second. Just be aware that there can be a bit of a bias out there, and I'm not going to say whether that's a good or a bad thing, it's just something to be aware of. Doctors sometimes have a bit of a preference towards prescribing medication. It's easy to prescribe, it can be done quickly, and it will have an effect usually on both the biologically driven and psychologically driven depression. Because for psychological depression, it raises that threshold and the brain's ability to deal with those psychological issues. Therapists have a bit of a preference towards therapy, and with good reason, because they often get very good results working through talking therapies and doing cognitive therapy. So my suggestion is try to keep an open mind, try and see whether uh, you can work with, with both doctors and therapists, or with bibliotherapy, or one of the other modalities of doing uh, talking therapy, uh, and don't be too dogmatic about this. So that leads on to the question where to start. Uh, now, the first thing that I would say is that if you have moderate to severe depression, it does not matter where you begin. The point is to start somewhere, to start quickly. Uh, generally speaking, I would say try to get help uh, right away and look at both sides. Look at whether you can get help on the talking side, the therapy side, or the bibliotherapy side at the same time as either medication or supplement or you know, one of those interventions. Go and seek help. Talk to your doctor, talk to a therapist, talk to one of the organizations that's out there that help people, and don't wait around. This is something that I think if you're standing outside and you're looking into depression, you maybe don't realize just how important it is to go and take that action, to take that action quickly. Because as far as I'm concerned, moderate to severe depression is a medical emergency. And the level of suffering is, is really, really high. So you need to go and get that intervention straight away and figure out whether it's biological or psychological afterwards. Go and talk to your doctor today. Later on, or if you have a less severe case at the start, uh, it is going to be important to try to tease these two sides apart. You can kind of figure it out the way I figured it out was working on all of the talking side and realizing that that only got me so far. There's, there's lots of strategies that I'm going to come onto and lots of experiments that you can run on either side to try to, to tease this apart. But I will say, if you get to the point where you're fairly confident that you have a biological cause, then you're going to be treating the biology, obviously, with medication or one of the other interventions that works on biology. Um, maybe, you know, supplements or diet or, you know, one of those things. But don't neglect the psychological side. And this is something that I see over and over again. People who are um, biologically depressed and respond really, really well have those thinking patterns. Remember that it, it, it comes in and you start out with depression that's causing... Uh, poor brain chemistry causing depression, you have thinking patterns, their thinking patterns come from the depression. So dealing with that whole process, you'll deal with your depression better if you work with your, de with your thinking patterns. You'll recover better and you'll stay recovered better if you work on the psychology. And this is something that I, I see repeatedly. People miss that and it's so important. Uh, on the psychological side, of course, if it's moderate to severe, you're going to start out with whatever it takes to just get feeling better. But as you get into it, you're going to really want to look at those courses. Don't you know, go on forever continuously thinking about taking a medication when actually you want to start looking at some of the ways that you're dealing with things, the way that you're thinking about these things, so that you can start to address those root causes. And again, that's something I see. Sometimes people stay on medication for many, many years when actually there might be an opportunity to come off medication. Don't make any changes to medication without talking to your doctor. I'm just giving you food for thought and things that you can then go and take and discuss with a trained professional. So uh, good luck and uh, I'll see you on the next video.